What's happening with hotels, restaurants, and travel? On Concierge Chats today with Freddie Bigler and Michael Romay, our two experts will guide us through. Hi, guys. Hi, Trish. Hi, Trish. You know, Freddie, you are riding this out in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where it seems things are not going that well. Yeah, they're not going well at all, it's especially with the recent surge. But um, there are too many conflicting reports, and the government doesn't seem, nobody's agreeing with anyone. So they're opening, they're closing. It's just, it's a little difficult. But we do have outdoor dining still open and um, the fitness centers, the parks, and the beaches. And Michael, you are in what was the epicenter in the U.S. of this but it seems that proper decisions uh, are now making things much better. That's correct. I think that New York City and the tri-state area is probably the safest region in the entire country right now um, with a very, very low positivity rate because of the very careful and gradual opening uh, in the city and, and the whole entire region. Uh, so, Michael, what about international travel? I know you really do keep your finger on the pulse of that. Yeah. It's really like um, maneuvering through a puzzle at the moment because there are exceptions and different rules in different areas. But as a U.S. citizen, we are officially banned right now in 33 different countries, which is all of the EU countries and countries like Japan, China, Brazil, uh, New Zealand, and the Bahamas uh, as well. Um, we can travel to most Caribbean islands at the moment, and more and more are opening throughout the summer. However, a COVID test is necessary. We can go to the Dominican Republic without a COVID test and without a lot of restrictions, just filling out a document. Bermuda is extremely strict, so not only do they require a COVID test before, but you must then take their COVID test and quarantine, and they monitor you and test you again while you're there. So there are exceptions in almost every case throughout the world. Two-thirds of the population of the U.S. has severe restrictions upon coming into, I guess it's New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Can you tell us about that? Yes, there is a mandatory 14-day quarantine now uh, from 31 states entering the tri-state area. It's a little bit different from before. It's not just a note that you would complete. It is now a document, that official, that is completed online and sent to the local authorities. And, and if there what is any... If you don't complete it? Um, there's a $2,000 fine or even a possible summons um, if it's not completed or if it's not in compliant with the rules. And the, and the states that have a 10% or more positivity rate are on the list to, have to abide by the 14-day quarantine. Now, Freddie, I know there was a 14-day quarantine coming into Florida, but now, again, it seems to be very confusing. It is confusing because at, at one point they had the National Guard boarding the plane to make sure that everyone complied and knew what the rules were as far as quarantine, self-quarantine went. But now uh, it's changed. They're not even seeing the National Guards. They come off, so... Yeah, I did hear that airport officials, uh, upon being interviewed, said, yes, this did used to happen, but suddenly they disappeared, and we don't even know ourselves what the regulations are. No, we really don't. We, we, we need a strong mandate, and we have to stick with it. Yeah, Freddie, at some point, I guess you do need to go back home to New York City. <laughs> have you figured out how you're going to do that and which airline you're going to choose? Well, um, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I think I'd like to be there beginning of September in New York, if I can. I haven't decided on the airline, but... Um. Yeah, and how about the airlines, Michael? Uh, does each airline have its own set of rules and restrictions, or can they make it up as they go along? Mm. They, they, they do, in a way, but most of the top airlines 
like Delta and United are requiring all passengers to wear a mask, not only on the plane, but even at the airport. Delta also is a little bit of an exception where all of their flights are leaving the middle seat empty. Yeah, because you see pictures in the media all the time about these packed airplanes. Would either of you guys get on an airplane that was packed like that? No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't unless I really had to. And sometimes, of course, if you have to fly, you don't really know until you get there. But there are certain routes that are busy and other routes really that are very, very empty. It's very unpredictable right now. Freddie, almost everything is open in Florida. But do you feel comfortable getting out and about? Have you dined at any restaurants? Do you feel comfortable going to the beach? Well, as far as the beach is concerned, um, no, I'm not comfortable going, but that's because of my COVID weight that I've put on. Dining out, I feel comfortable as long as the staff maintained a uh, distance uh, and also that they were covered. But um, yes, I feel comfortable going out, but not to the beach. Hmm. But that's only because you don't want to be in a bathing suit. Exactly. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, Michael, in New York City, you're in what they call phase four. Can you explain what that is? Phase four for New York City simply means that there's a little bit more outdoor activity open. So, for example, at the moment, the Bronx Zoo is open, the Botanical Gardens, the Central Park Zoo, which I just visited yesterday, the High Line, Liberty Island, but not the statue. Ellis Island is closed. So more outdoor spaces, outdoor dining is still open, indoor dining is not open, and they're going to try to keep the outdoor dining going as long as they possibly can, maybe until October, actually, until the weather really, really prohibits that, and then they will consider indoor dining. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the hotel industry. Um, this is an industry that both of you have devoted your entire lives to. Uh, what's the latest with the hotel industry, do you think, Freddie? Well, you know, the statistics are pretty staggering because they estimate that about 20% of the hotels in New York City won't be opening. And that's, that's uh, quite um, And we do have a lot of hotels, you know, from boutique to luxury. Um, after devoting 35 years of my life to this profession and to New York City. Um, it's disheartening, but not without hope. So we just have to roll with it right now. Yeah, what do you think, Michael? Well, here in New York City, it's a little bit of an exception because we do have more strict rules and restrictions and that 14 day quarantine prohibits more people from coming. Uh, to visit the city uh, together with the closures, you know, that are here. However, it's just to the contrary outside of New York City in the surrounding areas this summer because so many people didn't take that trip abroad. They're taking road trips, so they're going to the Jersey Shore, Connecticut, Long Island, Rhode Island, New England, and they're getting very high rates and very high occupancy uh, in that particular area. Las Vegas also is a place that's busy in comparison to the rest of the U.S. Well, I'm in Los Angeles, and we have our own mess here. Uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, this state did so well in having severe restrictions closing down, and people were really listening. Then about three, four weeks ago, I, I don't know exactly what happened, maybe opening too soon, but we are the epicenter now. And I have to tell you, just as our family is ready to start going to a restaurant again, we said, nope, we're, we're not going to do it now for a good while. 